Tuesday, the 31st, 2022. It's a Tuesday. And it is 6 uh, 35 in the morning. And so I had a very, very long dream. And I'm a, I have no idea how to tell this dream because it's. The most important part of the dream is the end of the dream. That's when Holy Ashaya came and he took the face of, of a person and he just he just like said the whole punchline. Uh, he said, It's you. You are the I don't know, but it's you. So, to go back, it was a terrible world. It was a world like, kind of what we have now, but just, just so much worse. It was, at least the world we have now, we try to pretend like everything is okay. We try to pretend like it's wrong to steal and kill and to do these things and, you know, at least it's, you know, we try. In this world, no. Everybody was just doing what they want. There was no real law. There was no protection. There was no... It was like... Just... Yeah, I don't know. It, it wasn't chaos. People were still living. Just like you're living now, but... Wow, you are at the mercy of this society. You don't have a choice but to do evil to survive. You don't have a choice but to steal, but to kill, but to cheat. You don't have a choice. If you want to get through this society, you're going to have to kill, steal, or lie, or do something. But not like now, where it's kind of hidden and quiet. No, it's like obvious and right out in the open. It's just how things are done. So... There was other things I saw at the beginning, but I can't really remember the beginning. What I remember when I became conscious in the dream, when I, be, when I understood I was dreaming, there was a scene of, it was a big prison. It was a huge prison like in India, but imagine like a factory or something. It was like the size of a huge factory, but it was a prison. And this big, long fence or going around it, and on top was just headless men they were like they they were chained to the top of the fence so if you have a fence so that's very very high a metal fence and then at the top there's kind of like a uh, platform or something at the top not a, not a full platform but a, enough for you to have a person stand there these people were pinned by their neck to that and they were, everybody was dressed in orange, like a prisoner uniform. And then it just seemed like these men didn't have their heads anymore. It seemed like they were pinned by their neck to the fence and then lost their head. I, I don't know. And, and in the dream, I couldn't figure it out either. I was like, did they have their head? Are they headless? I, I don't know, but it just went on and on and on. And it was like the opening to a movie where I'm in a car, I'm driving slow motion, and I'm just looking at all these dead men pass I pass by. And, and I mean, there were thousands. Just, you would think everybody in this place was dead. You would think everybody was on that fence dead. It was just horrific. They lost their head. And then... Uh, there was another scene where uh, I was some kind of, I don't know what, I, I, maybe just a person or a banker, I don't know, but I was doing a business dealing, I was in an office, and I had an opportunity, and I said to a woman, I was like, hey, you know, if I put my $20 and you put your $20, then we can make $60 or whatever I was doing, and me and this woman, we found a, a business plan or whatever and we were making lots and lots and lots of money I have no idea what we were doing but I believe it was legal and you know it grew and so I, I had all this money and I was taking the money to the bank 
And so when I got to the bank and I took out my money and then the bankers, the people that were at the bank, they weren't bankers. They weren't typical bankers like you see now. These were gangsters. So what I'm saying is the first scene was telling me the prison system was corrupt, killing people. And now this scene was telling me how the banking system is corrupt because they saw my money and they were just like, you know, they were going to take my money. And there were a few scenes with these people. Um, and I don't remember how I got out of this first one, but I ended up having to go back. And it, the second time it was war. It was like I had to tell them that I was going to pay them off. I was going to hire their boys. I was going to you know, do all this stuff. And, and there was a scene where I was in the car and the guy was threatening me and he was like, if you don't, and he was like, you know, if you don't cooperate, they were going to rape me. Like his whole team was going to run me through, he said. And he, they were like, they were going to kill us. They were going to rape us and kill us. And uh, I mean, it was, and then, and we started fighting somehow like and whatever the guy was going to do to me like I knew that it wasn't going to work it was a slow motion fight like you would see in the Matrix movie or something like he throws a punch and he throws something at me and you know but whatever he was doing I knew it wasn't going to hit me that it was going to somehow go back to him and hit him which it did I didn't get I didn't get raped I didn't get killed or anything like that but I did have to make a deal with them to say that okay I'm gonna give you a percentage I'm gonna hire your boys and all this so that that's the only way I got out of that scene alive was that I had to make a corrupt deal with them and holy Ashaya saved me like they weren't able to hurt me so the banking system was corrupt and then there was an uh, Another scene, I, I, I was singing, I think, I was an artist, and that was corrupt too. It, it was some horrible thing, I can't even remember anymore, it's fading away the dream, but it was like all these different lives were just showing me how terrible this world was. I guess I assume it's like the world that's going to be coming, it's just going to be so corrupt and so evil. And it's and and I was understanding. I was like, all of these people are trapped inside this horrible society. Like they're they're trapped in there. They, what can you do if you want to eat? If you want to work? If you want to live? You have to be like a victim to these evil people that are in control of the society. How can you? What can you do? And then. And then I was like, I think, I think I was thinking in the dream, how is it that I'm not stuck inside? You know, I was not a, a victim. I wasn't stuck inside. At the very, very end, I was coming out of the dream. I was waking up and I was just thinking, why? You know, and then Holy Ashaya came and he put his hands around a person's face beautiful face and he said it's you because I was asking how well how are these you know and, and what he was explaining I, I can't he didn't say it in words it was like telepathic understanding that he was saying that the whole point of it is you as the kingdom, as the temple of the Most High Father. It's, it's all about you and you understanding that you are the purpose for the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. You're the purpose for the whole, all of it, everything that's happening, the whole system, everything. And he put his hand on the face of the person to say it's you and so this is the key for this is he was explaining to me this is the key of what I have to teach if you don't want to be trapped inside already what we were already trapped inside what we just lived through in the 19th century in the 20th century 
if you don't want to be trapped in what's coming in this 21st century, this demonic Satan kingdom where you will, if you have the grace to not die, you will be submitted to these evil institutions and forced to do evil things that nobody wants to have to do to survive. You have to understand who you are and you have to understand what life is and you have to come out of that system to rise above it so that you're not stuck in it because you will be victim if you're not out of that and the way to come out of it is to understand the living word of Jesus Christ of Nazareth this is the way the truth and life this is what it is talking about all of it you 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 your body you you that's what he's saying and so I don't I don't even know I can't explain more on this recording but I will take what he's shown me here and I'll do my best to tailor the messages for this and uh, glory to the Father Holy Jesus. So today is June 5th 2022 and it is exactly two o'clock on the dot that would be 1400 hours here in Africa and it's funny because you can see on the screen I have Revelation 14. So I'm slowly understanding more and more what this dream is saying and I need to come here to give a better explanation to wrap up what Holy Ashaya is trying to explain to us by putting his hands on uh, that uh, young boy and uh, say, it's you. So the whole gospel of Jesus Christ, all of it, is talking about you your body on all levels it is mental spiritual physical it's your soul your mind your body your spirit the bible is talking about all of it okay and when i say physically i'm talking about your physical makeup it's talking about your brain it's talking about your glands it's talking about the physical um, makeup and processes of your physical body okay and we've gone through that and explained it so on one level in the past in the videos I mean we've explained it and we'll explain it again in the future for those who don't know what I'm talking about so on all levels the Bible is explaining it's talking about you so when we say when he says it's about you or it's you on one level that's what he, he means your body is the temple of the Most High Father. It is all about you as a human. Okay? That's on one level. The other level is if you've seen the movie Taken. Taken with Leland. Um, what's his name? His name is Leland. Liam Nelson, Neeson. If you saw this movie, by the way, it was a very, very good movie. I saw the first one. His daughter is taken and he goes to get her back. Okay? That's a good example of what happened on earth. We who are the children of the Most High Father, light beings, we were taken or we were brought here on earth. And Holy Father is turning everything upside down to get his children back. Just like in that movie. All of this is about us, all of it. So when you're sitting there and you're saying, oh, I, wh why would Jesus talk to me? I'm just a little insignificant. It's, you, it's about you. Why wouldn't he talk to you? Do you see what I mean? So this is the, the thing we have to change our mind and understand these things, okay? So for example, Revelation 12, how many years... Have people been speculating what Revelation 12 means? Now we know what it means because it happened in 2012. The sign of 2012 happened in 2012. But most people think it happened in 2017. So let's look at 2017. And you look 
and in the stars, okay, you had the sign, the biblical sign appeared um, actually in 2012, as I said, but in 2017, you have Jupiter that was moving. So it was actually uh, talking about the coming of the Antichrist, but regardless, it, you know, we don't need to argue about that. Whether it was 2012 or 2017, the sign of Revelation 12 appeared in the sky already. And this is something that happens once every, uh, according to this thing, it says 7,000 years. So this has already and is happening. And here when it's talking about the woman and her child, this is all talking about you. You, you, you. It's about you. When you're reading this, it's not some mystical person that, you know, some people say it's the church. Okay, who is the church? You know, it's the Holy Spirit. Who, this is talking, who is the man child? You know, is it Jesus? What is this? It's you. All of these things are talking about you. Okay, it's talking about the remnant church. It's talking about those human beings here on earth who are not taking the mark of the beast. When you take the mark of the beast, you become a cyborg. You no longer are human. You are now human 2.0. You are now a transhuman. You do not have the same DNA. You have been changed forever and cut off from the Most High Father. At this point, more than 60% of the earth have taken the mark of the beast. That means that there's only 40% of humans left on this earth. And the numbers are going to go down because of the mark is just going to keep advancing and become, you know, now it's going to be the chip and it's going to be these other things. So the people who are left, the human beings who have not taken the mark, who uh, are submitted as uh, Holy Ashaya servants, Holy Ashaya is their head, and uh, we are uh, born again Christians, children of the Most High Father, who have not taken the mark. That's who this is talking about. Okay, mystery solved. It's you. The tree of Israel, right here, Romans 11. It makes it very simple, okay? You're not Baptist. You're not Pentecostal. You're not Seven day Adventist. You're not Protestant. You are Israel. Israel, it's you. Every verse in the Bible talking about Israel is you. You, 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 it's you. Revelation 5, here, when we're talking about right here, and he has made us unto us, uh, God, made unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Guess what? It's just talking about you. Okay. Revelation 11, when it's talking about the two witnesses, guess what? It's talking about you. It's you. Okay. Revelation 14, when it's talking about the 144,000. Now, this again, I'm going to repeat myself. It's for the people who have not taken the mark of the beast in these days as we go through. The people who overcome, overcomers who come over, who go up to the rooftop, meaning you evolve your, your um, spiritual uh, elevation and your, um, your transformation into the remnant church, into the children of, of the Most High Father is happening, has happened. You have not taken the mark of the beast and you are a, a child of the Most High. You are clean. You are separated out. You are in the holy of holies. These are the people I'm talking about, the overcomers. It's you. Okay? So that I just wanted to... Uh, clarify a little bit the dream because this is very important as long as you're reading the Bible and you're reading it like it's some foreign it's talking about foreign people that you don't know it's talking about people that lived uh, 2,000 years ago that you have no connection to if that's how you feel and think you are completely missing it all it is talking about your body, your physical body, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit on all levels. It is talking about your ancestry, 
either by genealogy, bloodline, or by spiritually being grafted in because you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Those are your ancestors in that book. The prophecies that are to come and that we are living now, it's talking about you. All of it, the whole point of life, everything is about getting you back home to be with the Father. It is you. So please stop denying the power of Christ. You can understand the power of Satan. When If I said that I'm going to be here worshiping the devil and I'm a witch and I'm a warlock and you, and you can imagine me up here doing the heebie-jeebies all day and night, then you're going to think in your mind, oh, I'm going to have some kind of satanic power or demonic power or whatever. But if I say to you, I'm here and I'm worshiping the Father, I'm praying and singing on his new moons and on his feast days and I'm fasting and I'm, I'm doing a kosher diet and I'm doing all the things that Holy Father told me to do, you think I'm like an extremist nut. And if I say, hey, holy, Yeshua is talking to me, you're like, well, you know, that's not possible. I'm making it up. I'm crazy. I'm a false prophet. I'm all of these things. You can believe it from the evil side. You give the evil people the, those, the credit for that, but you can't see the benefit of being obedient to the Father and how that might evolve you and elevate you to understandings that you don't currently have because you're not listening. So I love you all in Christ. I pray that I've been able to be clear here. Uh, I pray that you have a blessed day. All praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Father. Holy is Yeshua.